Doug loves fine art, fast cars, and the better things in life. Yes. I never say no to that. This is Douglas Barrowman. But his greatest love is his 55-metre yacht. You have to spend it on something. There's a limit to how many houses you can have and private air travel, so therefore a lot of people come to the conclusion, I'm going to have one of these. He's made millions in finance and hasn't been shy about showing off just how many millions, telling the world in a 2022 documentary, Million Pound Mega Yachts. I think I'd have to say that everything you look at is expensive on this yacht. But campaigners and those burned as he made his money aren't so celebratory. I think it's deeply corrosive for people to be able to rip other people off, rip the tax man off and get away with it. People will fall for these sorts of things. It's just another way of him making more money out of this. It's like Scotland's answer to the bill for Wall Street. Mr Barrowman was thrown back into the public spotlight recently as the husband of ex-conservative peer Michelle Moan. I'm a business guy, so I think like an entrepreneur. I don't know the parliamentary rule book. We're constantly working to improve that delivery system, buying PPE from around the world and working to make more here at home. Mr Barrowman made millions from selling personal protective equipment, PPE, to the UK government during the pandemic. And one of his companies is now being sued by the government for breach of contract. It's also being investigated by the National Crime Agency. But how did Douglas Barrowman make his money before the PPE affair? AML has been described as Doug Barrowman's tax avoidance firm in an HMRC press release. In the 2010s, AML promoted a scheme which had supposedly enabled self-employed contractors to avoid income tax by converting their salaries into a loan from an offshore trust, a loan which would never need to be repaid. We've used top tax barristers in the UK to ensure that every aspect of the service is within the boundaries of current UK legislation and case law. Visit our website calculator to find out what you could be taking home with AML. The problem was that these disguised remuneration schemes weren't legally sound, and HMRC eventually clamped down in 2016, landing those who had been sold Mr Barrowman's schemes with often huge loan charges. Doug Adams was one of them. He had taken out a loan with one of Mr Barrowman's companies in 2011 when he was an IT contractor. He ended up facing a loan charge of £90,000 from HMRC. It's impacted my, my health. I've been to hospital several times um, with chest pains. It's 100% caused by the stress from, from the loan charge. You know, I, I did meet someone, but I was suffering from depression at the time. Uh, we got married and, you know, I'm pretty sure this has contributed to my divorce. And now um, I'm having to sell my house, you know, to, to basically pay, pay off the divorce settlement. It's effectively destroyed my life. It's, it's meant that, um, you know, at the age of 56, I'm gonna be homeless. Um, and, you know, with, with property prices as they are in this area, I won't be able to live here anymore. Amy Ross, an oil and gas sector contractor, also signed up for the same scheme in 2011. In 2015, she received a letter from HMRC informing her that she owed a considerable sum of money. I just remember sitting in my car and feeling physically sick when I was reading it, and it was just, like, panic. It was over £4,000 a month for three years. I can't pay them more than I have coming in. It's always there in the back of your mind. Every now and again you can forget about it, and then one of these brown envelopes from HMRC lands on your doorstep. There have been cases of suicide which have been linked to the loan charge. Does it surprise you that it's had such an extreme impact on some people? No, uh, that doesn't surprise me because I do remember having some, you know, momentarily sort of similar thoughts, I think, you know, when you're lying in bed at night thinking, I, you know, I can't afford to pay this, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm not surprised that some people kind of went all the way there.
It's estimated that Douglas Barrowman's companies have made tens of millions of pounds of profit from pushing these kind of schemes which have upturned the lives of people like Doug and Amy and many more. Whether Mr Barrowman's companies were acting within the law by pushing these schemes before the 2016 HMRC clampdown is a moot point. But now Tax Policy Associates has uncovered new evidence shared with Newsnight which suggests that Mr Barrowman's companies were continuing to push these schemes after that 2016 clampdown, which is a whole different order of seriousness. Here's the paper trail. It starts with a letter from Mr Barrowman's main company, AML, from February 2019, recommending that its customers hit with loan charges get in contact with a third company called Vanquish Options. Vanquish was pushing a convoluted scheme which would supposedly clear the individual's loan charge liability by converting it into yet another loan for a large fee, of course. The problem from the perspective of HMRC was that nothing had changed. The individual still had a loan and was therefore liable to the loan charge. But Vanquish was advising people that it would square them with the tax authorities. Here's a letter to someone who signed up to the Vanquish scheme claiming they now have no outstanding liability. And note the date of the new loans made referenced, between 2017 and December 2018. Remember, this is long after HMRC had made 100% clear that these were not legitimate tax avoidance schemes. You know, it was again criticised for being retrospective. Now, some of these arrangements would have undoubtedly have received accelerated payments. Tax experts believe it's this that creates grounds to investigate whether these companies connected to Mr Barrowman have engaged in fraud towards HMRC, not least because it puts down in writing something that simply wasn't true. Well, I think there's undoubtedly enough for HMRC to justify opening a criminal investigation. Um, whether they would, in the event, find sufficient evidence to you know, give them confidence that they could proceed through the courts with such a criminal charge, and um, that though obviously would, would be dependent upon what evidence they found, uh, and that in itself will be quite a challenging task given that probably most of the evidence they'd be looking for is outside of the UK. You know, we have reached a point where you know, we perhaps do need to see some of these, you know, businesses and the individuals that run them being held to account properly for what they sell. Um, and if this type of thing doesn't come within the scope of that sort of approach, then it's difficult to see what would. Now, Mr Barrowman has long denied any connection with Vanquish, but Newsnight has seen new evidence which casts considerable doubt on that denial. It turns out emails from Vanquish use the same email server as AML. AML's email headers show that its emails originate from IP address 89107.1218, the same as that found on Vanquish emails. The IP address geolocates to Douglas on the Isle of Man, where Mr Barrowman and his business interests are based. The two companies also had some of the same personnel, including Arthur Lancaster. Vanquish directors also included Timothy Eve and Paul Ruocco, two close Barrowman business associates. There's some further important context for Mr Barrowman's denials. In a recent BBC interview, Mr Barrowman and Michelle Moan admitted intentionally misleading the press over the PPE affair, supposedly to protect their privacy. I am a private person and don't want anyone in the press to know of any business activity or anything I get engaged in. It says that we cannot believe their denials. They said they were involved in PPE Metro. They were. He said he had no involvement in Vanquish. He was. He's probably going to deny some of our other findings, but those denials, I feel, are worthless. It's unclear what, if any, is Mr Barrowman's involvement in the potential fraudulent letters, but he's defended the lawfulness of the scheme in his response to the BBC. A spokesman for Mr Barrowman's Knox Group of Companies said that Mr Barrowman denies any and all allegations of dishonesty, misconduct and wrongdoing, and claims HMRC has had disclosures of relevant documents, and that there's been extensive dialogue and disclosure for several years with the tax authorities. They claim that during this time, HMRC has never even suggested, let alone alleged, that there's been any form of dishonesty or wrongdoing by the Knox Group. They added that they deeply and sincerely regret the distress and anguish arising from the HMRC loan charge, which they blame on retrospective legal action from the government. 
Timothy Eve, Arthur Lancaster and Paul Ruocco did not respond to BBC inquiries. If HMRC weren't to take any action over this case, what would the implications of that be? I mean, for me, as a tax lawyer, the implications are deeply depressing because it means that you can ignore tax law. You can make up tax schemes that have no prospect of working. You can sell them to people, extract large amounts of money from people. And then when it all goes wrong, you can just walk away, hide on an offshore island. The people you sold the schemes to will be financially ruined and you just keep the winnings. In this case, likely hundreds of millions of pounds and nobody can touch you. If we send that message, it's deeply corrosive to the tax system. I think it's deeply corrosive on a wider societal level for people to be able to rip other people off, rip the tax man off and get away with it. But that's the message we'll send if there's no prosecution. What are your thoughts about Douglas Barrowman and what he's done? I don't know, it's like Scotland's answer to the bull for Wall Street. You know, just kind of keeps getting away with these things. There's no consequences for him. He's just going to keep doing it again and again. Amy, Doug, and many others think action must not be delayed. <laughs>